Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and welcome to Dispatch 2 here at CES 2020. We're starting the day off at Eureka Park. This is where most of the startups are located, the young and scrappy companies. We really enjoy coming out to this part of the show because it's missed by a lot of the media and you always find a lot of the hidden gems here. So we're gonna go head on in there and see what we can find. So we're looking at something that is a prototype at the moment, but I think it's rather neat. So this is a device called the Bezigo. And what it does is it looks for mosquitoes based on their movement. And if it finds one flying around in a room, it will paint it with a laser. Now the laser is not going to kill the mosquito, but it will tell you where it is so you can get rid of it. And that's the first stage of this product. What they're hoping to do with it eventually is have the product actually kill the mosquito. It won't shoot a laser at it, but it will, and get this, it's gonna have a little drone that it will dispatch to get the mosquito, and then it will come back and dock itself with the base station here. It's kind of interesting how it works because they're looking for the movement patterns of the mosquito to paint it and then take it down. Uh, so this will be uh, about $160 or so when it releases. Again, it's in the prototype phase now, but this is the kind of cool stuff that we see here at the show. So security cameras are a dime a dozen these days. Everybody's got one. I'm always looking for something a little unique and different. Uh, this one struck me as something slightly different. It's about $30 or $40. It's called the UCAM. It's coming out soon. And it's designed around security. So the camera will encrypt your footage before it gets uploaded to the cloud. And that's important because if their servers ever got compromised, no one would be able to do anything with that footage because it requires the camera to unlock it. So that was interesting. Another interesting component is that it's using the blockchain for authentication. So they don't even own the authentication in, on their servers either. So those things are, are rather unique. Um, what concerns me though is that uh, th there is a subscription fee. Uh, so you do have to have an ongoing cost of ownership but you can pay for it with cryptocurrency because of course it is using the blockchain, so you may as well do the crypto too. So PTZ on this one, not out yet, but will be soon. Maybe we'll try to get one in for review and see how it works. So here's a neat little smartphone. It's called the Pro One. Looks like your standard smartphone. It's got a Snapdragon 835, costs about 699, but it's got an integrated keyboard on it that you can flip open one-handed like I just did. Look at that. And you can start typing. And what's kind of neat about this is that you've got the keyboard and you can get rid of the on-screen keyboard and fit more on screen when you need it. And then you can flip it back and go back to talking on your phone. Uh, this is a UK company, kind of a neat device. You can buy it here in the US, unlocked. And if you're looking for a phone keyboard, maybe something to take a look at. And of course, it's running Android. So we were walking by the British section of the startup area here, and we found this thing called the IntelliZ, not the IntelliZ, the IntelliZ. And this is a tracker that will track locations of things with no subscription. Typically we see that you have to buy the device and you have to pay for a monthly subscription for data. This is one money and you're done. 189 for this. It's guaranteed to work for three years on a single battery. It only pulls itself every so often or when you need it to pull. And it can also work with geofencing arrangements as well. So for the text movement, and it sees itself leaving an area, it can let you know when it moves again. This has a couple of advantages to this low power mode because if a car thief is looking for an active tracker in a vehicle, for example, uh, they'll break in, find the tracker, and get rid of it. There's tools that you can use to do that. Uh, this is really only transmitting once a day or a little bit more if you ask it to uh, reveal its location. Now, it happens when the battery dies after the three years, uh, you trade it in and you get a discount on a new one. So it's not quite a subscription. Uh, what's nice about it, too, is that you can turn it off completely and get more battery life out of it. Uh, so if you're only going to need it for maybe three months out of the year, uh, you'll get a longer lifespan on it as well. So kind of a set and forget kind of device, rather interesting. Again, 189, we should be seeing this in the consumer market on Amazon a little later this year. So this really kind of struck me as something intriguing. This looks like your standard portable air conditioner, but it's not using a refrigerant, it's using water. You have to fill it up with a couple of gallons of water to start, and it runs it through its cold loop system, and there's no compressor, but it is blowing out really cold air here, pretty significantly so. They're saying it's about 9,200 BTUs and only consumes about 150 to 200 watts of power to do it. So low power consumption, it'll actually take the condensation being formed by uh, the process here and put it back into that closed loop system. There's a tank in the back, so it's possible you could fill up the tank 
uh, with a lot of condensation, so you have to uh, drain that out if you need to. But it won't overflow because if it detects an overflow, it will actually shut down. So rather unique device here. Uh, this is called the Airbitat, and maybe we'll try to get one in. Crazy thing is they're selling it for $899, so it's a little bit more expensive than a portable AC unit, but not as much as I thought it would be. Now right across the hall was a related device. You couldn't make this up, right? Uh, this is called the Tex Energy. It's about $380 US. And it is generating, uh, not right now, but if enough wind was blowing, uh, 12 volts, 2 amps. You need about a 15 mile per hour wind to make it uh, give you the full voltage there. But they're designed to kind of pack down and be taken with you. So of course, if you had a solar charger, uh, you would have to use it when the sun was up. Here, if the wind is blowing, uh, you can get a charge for your devices and pack it up and take it with you. They got another one I want to show you. Let's head into their booth for a second. So we have a smaller one over here. This is the Infinite Air. It's about $130, and it generates uh, 5 volts, 1.5 amps, which is about what you would see with a phone charger. So just a little bit lower than what you would have with an iPad charger, for example. It needs about 12 miles per hour of wind, but it's super compact, so you can fit it in this little bag here, and this is the box that it comes in. Uh, they have another version here that sits a little lower to the ground, same output. Um, and it goes into this little bag here. So if you're out camping, you could be generating power even when the sun is down by just having the wind blow. Pretty cool stuff and pretty affordable too. So here's a little interesting device that might work in small offices that are maybe concerned about ransomware. This is called the filing box and it costs about 100 bucks for a one terabyte version. It's a network attached storage device, but it defaults all of the files to read only unless you specifically unlock the file for editing. So if you've got some really mission critical documents on a shared server, or maybe a backup that you're running once a day or something, and you wanna make sure that no ransomware can impact it, this is going to show up on the network and fully accessible like any network drive, but everything is read-only unless you individually unlock a file uh, to work on it, and then after you save it, it'll re-lock it. Kind of an interesting approach because you can really very easily lock things down in an office, I think, better than you might with a traditional means of trying to set individual file permissions or something along those lines. Neat concept, we'll have to try to get one into review. It's not yet available here in the US, but will be soon. So we've wrapped up downstairs in the startup area, and to be honest, it was the least exciting I've seen in five years of coming here to CES. What's funny down there is that you often get a lot of the same thing. Uh, one year it was air purifiers, for example, another year it was smart light bulbs or whatever. Uh, this year it's a lot of things that support other devices, a lot of development stuff, a lot of B2B products, so not a lot of neat things for consumers. We did find a few, but not as many as I was hoping. Now up here, we are in uh, the upstairs of the SANS Convention Center. This is more of a mainstream convention area, so we've got a lot of smart home devices up here from the big companies, some networking, and a few other things as well. So we're just going to walk around and see what we can find here, and then later on tonight we're going to go to Showstoppers, which should have some more cool stuff to take a look at. So let's have a look. We haven't seen much with new network attached storage devices at the show, but we're seeing a lot of new things being done with existing hardware. And QNAP, of course, is a company that we have covered on the channel in the past, and they have upgraded some of their security software. I don't believe this is out yet, but they're adding a layer of AI to their surveillance software that's built into their devices. I believe you have to have a license for some of this. Let me show you the two things they're demoing here at the show. Uh, the first one, if I get back in frame here, uh, is on this screen, and this is a people counter. Um, so it's looking at people walking in and out of the booth in this case, and it's able to keep track of who's come in and who's gone out to give you kind of a rough count as to who might be coming in your store throughout the course of the day or something like that. And it's doing that based on recognition. Um, it will build a database of the people coming in, and depending on what licensing you choose, you'll get different numbers of people that it can store there. Um, but it all stores locally on the QNAP device and it's doing everything on device as opposed to going to the cloud, just like any other NAS application does for uh, these particular NAS devices. Now over here, um, this one is called QVR Face and this one is recognizing uh, faces and it's trying to make a determination again on AI 
based on what it thinks I am. So it's saying I am an adult male between 20 and 45. It's pretty accurate because I am an adult male between 20 and 45, a little closer to 45 than the 20, unfortunately. Uh, Sarah behind the camera stepped in front of it a few minutes ago and it, it successfully uh, detected her gender and also assigned a very flattering age as well. So it seems to be working pretty nicely. And again, this is something that you can run on your existing QNAP hardware. Now they're also demoing a conferencing software called Koi Meter. And what's nice about it is that it is something that you host yourself. So uh, if you want to have a conference right now, you have to connect it to another QNAP NAS, but it's not going through anyone else's cloud. It's under your control. It does projection via Chromecast out to TVs. So you don't even have to plug it in via HDMI if your uh, QNAP NAS is not nearby to the television. Uh, these NASs do, though, many times support HDMI depending on the one that's coming out. And speaking of HDMI and NASs, this is their new product they announced here at the show. This is the TBS453DX. And what's cool about this one is that it is a fanless NAS and very small. This might work well in a home theater environment because it makes no noise. It supports four M.2 M SATA drives, and you can, of course, configure those in different RAID configurations. It's also got 10 gig Ethernet on the back, so you can make use of the speed you would get out of those uh, M SATA drives, along with a bunch of USB connections and audio out and everything else. Inside, it's got an Intel processor, a J4105. So that should be good for Plex transcoding and a few other things there. So pretty cool looking package. I hope to get one of these in and review it because I know a lot of you might be interested in a small fanless NAS that actually looks halfway decent for the living room. Now we also found a new network switch from QNAP. This is not yet out and there's no pricing available just yet, but I think it'll be in the $500 territory. This is a four port 10 gig switch that also has uh, eight gigabit ports here. And what's nice about this is that it's a managed switch, so you can use VLANs and other things with it uh, in addition to getting a good number of devices connected for, I think, a pretty reasonable price for a 10 gig managed switch. You have a choice of SFP or your uh, CAT5 or CAT6, uh, I guess, uh, connection on there. So it's one or the other, but you can choose there and, uh, of course, plug in your uh, gigabit Ethernet to the other ports there and have everything interoperate, interoperate together. So good stuff from QNAP. Uh, this would be something I'd actually be looking at purchasing at some point because I do want to upgrade the network in the studio. So this is the Dell UFO. It is a concept product, but it is a handheld gaming PC running Windows 10. They didn't have a lot of details that they would share with the press, but there's a few things that they did share. It's got a 720p display, at least on the handheld component. And as a result, even though you're at a lower resolution, it does look really nice. The processor, they say, is a 10th generation Intel chip, but no word on what chip it was. But I have a feeling some of the new improvements they've made to those uh, Iris graphics are probably at play here. It is actively cooled with a fan. It has a really nice kickstand on the back, so you could set it up on a desk and detach the controllers. Uh, it has switch-like qualities, too. You can, again, detach those controllers. you got the docking capability. And the uh, Dell rep said that the bottom port, at the moment at least, uh, supports Thunderbolt 3, so you could have an eGPU added to the mix or something if you wanted to. So there's a lot of potential here. Again, just a concept. They're trying to gauge what public interest there is out for it. But I'll tell you what, it felt pretty polished to me. So it is 7 p.m., and we are at Showstoppers, which is another one of these events where a bunch of companies are in one place, and they invite the media over. It's been a long day, but we got to keep trucking away here. We're at the Wynn Hotel and Casino, which is a really classy place, actually. Let's go walk around and see what we can find here. So we're starting here at the Wacom table, and they've got a new tablet here. It's about $400, 13-inch, 1080p, and it's neat because it works with Android phones, at least the Samsung DeX phones here. They have it connected up via DeX to a Galaxy 10. You've got your pen here, and you can draw on supported apps with the Wacom tablet, and this same tablet will actually work on a PC as well. 1080p display, all the same stuff. You can plug it into either device and use it with Illustrator on Windows or some special apps on the Android side. So this is something that I've been looking forward to checking out. This is the AT Games Legends Ultimate. It's got like several hundred arcade games and I think a few ported titles on here as well. Uh, I haven't seen one in person before and it's a lot larger than the arcade one-up cabinets that are out there. And these are sold exclusively at Walmart and Sam's Club here in the US. Uh, so it's $5.99 at Walmart, but if you've got a Sam's Club membership, it's $4.99, so you probably want to buy it there. Um, 1080p display, it looks pretty nice, feels pretty sturdy. It's got some nice speakers here at the top, light-up marquee and everything. Uh, a lot of arcade controls. I'm going to have Sarah get a little closer here and take a look at it. Um, so you've got two 
uh, sticks and six buttons, so you can do your fighting games. You got the spinner controls here. You got a trackball that seems to feel pretty good for Centipede and that kind of stuff. And I believe Centipede, or at least Millipede, is one of the games included on it. So that's cool. Now, they've got a subscription service that will let you uh, get more additional games. They tell me you can bring your own ROM files if you have them. Uh, and it also has some kind of streaming service they're trying to set up. Another feature of Note, and it's got a bit of a gotcha, though, is this stuff right here, because you can plug in your own stuff into these HDMI ports here. The problem, though, is that you can't use the arcade controls if you plug in the computer. And that's the killer for me, because I would love to plug my mister into this, and I can't use the arcade controls with it. So if that, I mean, if they, if they had the ability to get those controls connected to what's plugged in here, it would be killer, but it kind of falls short a little bit for me there. So I've been following these cat phones around for a while. I see them at all these shows that I go to. Uh, this is their new 52 phone, and it is ruggedized, but it's very thin, so it doesn't really look like one of those rugged construction phones, but it can survive a lot of drops and falls, uh, both to its casing and to its screen. It's got a MediaTek processor inside, uh, 549 for this one. What I found interesting about it, beyond the fact that it's durable and rugged and you don't need a case for it, is that they guarantee it here in the U.S. for a year if it should break after dropping. So you kind of have a built-in insurance policy with it. Uh, these are unlocked phones. You can get them, I think, on Amazon, and they should work with most carriers here in the U.S. So we stopped by the Lockley table. They make door locks, and they've got a new one here called the Vision. And this one, at least on the surface here, checks all the boxes for me. So first of all, you can unlock it with a key, a key punch here. And these numbers will change every time you activate it, so your fingerprints won't always be in the same place. You got a fingerprint reader on the side, and you can do it the old-fashioned way here with a traditional key that it comes with. But there's some other things that this does, because it's got a camera here at the top. So it kind of works like maybe a ring doorbell would in that you've got video coming back to you when someone's at the door and you have two-way communication through the lock itself. Now there's a base station that it comes with and on that base station you can put in an SD card and record local video and access it remotely. No fee. There's no subscription here unless you go into the cloud and do some of the other premium services. But I think for a bulk of what you would want this for, it will work without an ongoing subscription. Cost is $399, so it is a little on the pricier side, but the cost of ownership, I think, over time is less. Battery powered, and it has its own base station again that it communicates with only when it needs to, so it's not going to maintain a constant Wi-Fi connection, for example, so the battery should last as long as a typical one. I'm going to try to get one of these in to try it out. It also works with the big three for home automation. HomeKit from Apple with their new software uh, activation thing that they're doing, along with the A word, Amazon, and Google Home. So this is the Heart Guide. It is a watch that can do blood pressure measurements. So if you need to check your blood pressure frequently and you don't want to carry around a big cuff with you, this will do it on your wrist. Cost $4.99. I first saw this as a prototype, but it's now been cleared for use by the FDA. And you can take your blood pressure readings pretty much anywhere. And it's got a clock on it, too. Now, it doesn't do any fancy optical stuff. We're going to see if Sarah can get in on this. Otherwise, we'll roll in some B-roll. And you can see it's got a little area here that it inflates to do that blood pressure measurement. So you feel a little, uh, you know, a little tension on your wrist there, but it won't last long. And then it will tell you what your blood pressure is. And of course, it links up with apps, including one that they make, but also uh, the health apps that are on the Android and iOS platforms. So we've been seeing reports in the news, which are very unfortunate, of kids getting left in cars inadvertently by a parent or a caregiver. About 50 or so children die each year in the United States because of this. And this is a product that's designed to deal with that issue. Uh, so this is called the Copilot. And what it does is it straps onto uh, the car seat that you're already using, kind of below the strap. And it has a little beacon here that goes with it that you put on your keychain. So if this thing is fastened and you walk away from the car and it gets too far, this is going to beep at you to let you know that you got to go back and let the kid out. And it's just a peace of mind thing that if you're ever really concerned that you might accidentally do something like this, this would, of course, prevent that from happening. It's $44.99, and you have to charge it every couple of months because it will die, but it's just a USB charger thing, so you could probably charge it in the car when the kid's not with you. So this is a home security drone called the B, and it will surveil your property. You can actually send it out on patrol, and it will autonomously land on its base station called the Hive and charge itself. 
Now it works with these uh, little sensors here and what you can do with these is set them up throughout your yard and it will look for motion events and if it finds something happening, it will actually send the drone up to investigate what's going on. There's, of course, an app to monitor what's going on in each of these uh, triggering events. So you have proximity alarms, and then the drone, of course, can go up and investigate. Now, this is a little on the pricier side of things. So you're looking at about 10 grand for the drone and its charging station alone. If you want the motion sensors, it's another $500 a piece. So they're clearly targeting a wealthier clientele with a lot of important things to protect, but still a pretty interesting system that's making use of AI to try to figure out what's going on in a property. Now, I've been a customer of other world computing for a long time. They've been, uh, in the past, kind of primarily servicing the Mac, but they are, of course, working now across many different platforms. And they do a lot of Thunderbolt stuff, probably more than anybody else. And they've got a lot of different stuff that they just released here at the show. Check this one out. This is the Thunder Bay Flex 8. It is an 8-bay hub, Thunderbolt hub, or dock, along with a lot of storage. So you've got four hard drives you can put down here. I believe there are SATA drives that go down here. And you've got four slots here for NVMe. And because you're a Thunderbolt, you'll get a lot of performance out of this. It's got a, a compact flash card and a SD card reader down here. It supports SD 4.0, which I'm assuming is UFS 2. And if I'm wrong, you'll let me know. You got USB-C on the front here, USB 3. You got a bunch more ports on the back. Uh, they got another one here called the Thunder Bay 8, which is uh, more of a hard drive solution. So you can load this up and have a direct attached RAID array. This one I thought was pretty cool, the Thunder Bay 4 Mini. And this, you plug in your little SATA SSDs, and it's got a nice little lock on there, too. Actually, they all do. Again, direct attached storage, so you got to plug it into a Windows PC or a Mac with Thunderbolt. They have a software RAID program called Soft RAID, and that will allow you to do a software RAID, but have it work cross-platform. So you could have this thing as a RAID 0 running super fast on your Mac. You could then plug it into a Windows Thunderbolt 3 computer and read the files off of it. That's pretty neat. We got more stuff to look at, though, over here. Um, they got a little PCIe card box here. Uh, but this one, if you're looking for an eGPU, would be worth looking at. This is their uh, Titan, the Node Titan. Now, I bought an Akidio Node a couple of years ago. It's a much larger uh, box than this. And what this is is a box with a slot. You put a GPU in it. It's got a power supply. You run that Thunderbolt cable over to your PC, and now you've got an external GPU for gaming. If you've got a Mac, you throw an AMD card in here. Windows, of course, is a little bit more flexible. And it's amazing what you can get out of a laptop after connecting one of these. And what I really like about this is it's got a handle on it. That's pretty cool and handy. So uh, really portable, especially if you're doing a lot of portable gaming with your laptop. Certainly heavier than your laptop, but you got a lot of GPU power you can put in there. One last thing to look at, which is their new Thunderbolt 3 dock. This is the called the Thunderbolt 3 Pro dock. Uh, again, you got the fast card readers on here, USB. On the back, though, it's got 10 gig Ethernet, and it's only about 340 bucks, so not that much different than other uh, docks that we've looked at here. It does uh, 60 watts of power delivery here out of this slot. You get 15 out of the other one. Uh, and then you've got display port here. You got eSATA, a lot of ports to make use of here. Again, all with a single cable back to your Mac. So if you are looking for Thunderbolt stuff, they've definitely got a lot of things to look at. Not all of the pricing is determined, but it will be soon. So check out their website. So that is going to do it for day two here at CES and Dispatch 2 for that matter. We had a great time today. There was a lot of different types of things that we found here across the show floor. And it's often hard to find all of these hidden gems, but that's why we never put the backpack down. We're always on the run, just trying to find really cool things to tell you about. So tomorrow, uh, we are heading over to the main show floor. So we're going to see more of the big brands represented. Uh, we're going to be meeting with Lenovo first thing in the morning. So we've got a lot of stuff to check out over at their uh, booth and a lot of other places to visit as well. So a lot more to come. Stay tuned. And until the next one, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.